Yeah. What's up? Uh, this is Matt Smith, Engineer Leffler here, and we hope you are having a great start to this President's Day week. And the kids I know in Maine and Massachusetts are home from school for the weekend enjoying themselves, but we got some things to discuss for you. And Janine, will you get us going here? So today is the first part of our two part February entertainment review. We were, we were originally going to do one huge video, but we decided to review the Valentine's day TV episodes separately from the Disney movies. So that way the video would not be so long. So that's what we're going to be discussing today. We are going to be talking about the um, romantic comedy movies and the TV show episodes of Cougar Town and um, The Office. Right. All right. So to begin, the first romantic comedy movie we're going to discuss is, oops, 10 Things I Hate About You. What did you like the best about 10 Things I Hate About You? I liked how it really uh, described the story of a girl who is in a family where it's just her dad and her sister. And she has, it looks like she has very little to do when it comes to true love. Right. So for those who don't remember, 10 Things I Hate About You came out in 1998 and starred Larissa Olenek from The Secret World of Alex Mack. Um, Heath Ledger, who passed away in 2008, and Julia Stiles from Save the Last Dance. And it is based on a Shakespeare play, The Taming of the Shrew. My favorite scene in that movie is the scene where Patrick, who is Heath Ledger's character, is singing the song from Jersey Boys in the football stadium to Cat, who is Julia Stiles' character. And I also like the poem that um, Kat writes to Patrick in her English class. So we gave 10 Things I Hate About You a B. And Jean, went, ever since she has been listening to this movie, she has her son, Can't Take My Eyes Off You, from Frankie Valley stuck in her head. Sometimes if you hear those lyrics, you could do the same thing. Um, so the next movie that we wanted to discuss today is Fools Rush In. Fools Rush In came out in 1998, and it starred Matthew Perry and Salma Hayek. It's actually 1996. I thought it was 1998. Okay, maybe you're right. Um, so we really liked this movie. We've seen it three times, actually. Uh, two previous times before reviewing it this time. Um, mm -hmm. the things that we liked the best about it was the on screen the on screen chemistry between Salma Hayek and Matthew Perry, and also Matthew Perry's father is in this movie too as Alex's father. Alex is Matthew Perry's character, so I really like the scenes where they get to interact because he all Matthew Perry's father also guest starred on Friends but they were not in any scenes together because that was the see that was the episode where um it was mostly focused on Rachel and Joshua going on a date and um Matthew Perry's dad played Joshua's dad I gave that episode of Friends the one with Rachel's new dress, a B minus, I think. Because the only thing I liked about that episode was the fact that Matthew Perry's dad was in it. Other than that, it wasn't really too funny. And what did we rate the Fool's Rush in? B plus. Um, for Valentine's Day centric TV episodes, the first one that we watched is The Office. Uh, episode Valentine's Day. What did you like the best about that? I just liked how it was uh, almost like a throwback to when we were kids and we used to make valentines for the others. Right, right. Who are your favorites? We just started recently watching The Office. So far, based on all of the episodes that we have seen, who are your favorite characters? I like Steve Carell's character, plus, in addition, the character who plays Pam. Who is also in the Mean Girls movie that we saw last week. That's right. Um... So yeah, I also 
love Pam. Jim, who is played by John Krasinski, is also my favorite character. I also like Oscar. And I also like Phyllis. And I also like Dwight. Mm-hmm. Um, so what did we give that episode of The Office for a ranking? I believe we gave that episode uh, a B minus. I, thought, I could be wrong. I thought it was a B plus. Let me double check that. Oh, apparently I did not write that down, but I thought it was a B plus. Um, okay, then another episode uh, for Valentine's Day that we watched was related to SpongeBob. Actually, we didn't watch the SpongeBob episode. We only watched Cougar Town in the office. We were supposed to watch SpongeBob, but we never got around to it. Okay, so let's review Cougar Town. Um, so the fir- the Cougar Town episode that we watched for Valentine's Day was the one Like a Diamond. This is the episode from season five that Matthew Perry guest starred on. He played Sam. In this episode, Courtney Cox's character named Jules gets in a car crash with Matthew Lou Perry's character, who's Sam, and they kind of like have a chance meeting and Sam falls in love with Courtney's character and proposes to her. And, I mean, that episode was sort of anticlimactic and I felt bad for Sam's character because he actually brings his whole entire family to meet Jules and Jules is obviously engaged to marry somebody else, Travis. And it's funny because in the credits scene, there's a blooper reel where Matthew Perry calls Jules Monica. And as a <laughs> Friends fan, I caught that right away. Um, you caught it before I did. I did. I did indeed. Um, so we gave that episode of Cougar Town a... Was it a B? Yeah, I think so. Um, so who are your favorite characters in Cougar Town? In Cougar Town, I do like Courtney Cox, who plays Jules. But I also like Busy Phillips' character. I like Busy Phillips. I like uh, Jules' son, Travis. And, I'll, of course, I like Jules. Now, how would you compare and contrast Monica and Jules? Now, in Friends, Monica plays the older sister of Russ. Um, no, actually, she's the younger sibling to to Ross. Okay, if she's younger, but still, I was about to say that she is the one who is always giving Ross a few pointers. Right. Plus, she's also more or less one of the more mature of the, the six them. She is. Monica always came off to me as the most mature character Of all of... I mean, I don't know. Out of all the guys, who would you say is the most mature? Most likely Matthew LeBlanc's character, Joey. Really? Why? Because I thought he was the one who had the least amount of dramatic moments. Plus, he also stood up for... For Matthew Perry's character, Chandler, in situations... What episodes have we seen when Joey stands up for Chandler? Um, I do believe it was when they were either moving in together or when they were just watching one time uh, Wheel of Fortune clip. Okay, I'm not really sure what you're talking about. I would actually disagree with that and... I feel like Chandler is the most mature out of all of them because, I mean, sure, he has his moments where he's kind of insecure in relationships, but (coughs) he has a really high-paying job as a statistical analysis and data reconfiguration person. (coughs) Though I never quite understood. Okay, maybe I just need a little refresher. Joey's character is an out-of-luck actor who has trouble finding work throughout most of the series or the earlier part of the series until he gets on Days of Our Lives. In season three. (laughs) (coughs) And he's in debt for a lot of the show and actually owns Chandler quite a lot of money by the end. 
Okay, so then that means he has to pay Chandler quite a bit. Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Okay, can we move on? Yes. Um, I also wanted to mention my favorite episode of Friends from season six, and that's the episode where Chandler and Monica get engaged. That episode always makes me emotional because of the scene at the end where Monica starts to propose to Chandler but then starts to cry and then Chandler takes over. So I always rate that episode pretty highly in my rankings. I gave it an A- as so did Entertainment Weekly. So the next thing I wanted to mention was romantic romance book couples. I have been reading a lot of romance books since the end of December. Um, and I wanted to talk about a couple of my favorites. The first one is a book I recently just finished, Bride by Allie Hazelwood. Allie Hazelwood usually writes a lot of um, a lot of romances that are set in STEM, and this is her first leap into fantasy. She wrote this this book is focused on a vampire bride and a werewolf, so kind of think Twilight, Bella and Jacob, uh, that kind of thing. So, Misery and Lo are the couple in this book, and the reason why I like them is because of um, the buildup of their relationship from the beginning of the book to the end. It, it's very it's very good, but um, their marriage is a marriage of convenience because basically they're trying to get married to form an alliance for their families, and I don't want to spoil the ending in case you guys want to read it. The next book I wanted to mention is Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. Um, so this book is set in a hospital, and the two main characters are Brianna, who is the girl right there, and Jacob, who is the boy right there. Uh, Jacob is the most relatable character in this book to me because he is like me, and he has social anxiety. So I really applaud Abby Jimenez for writing a character in her book that has social anxiety. Um, I really like this book a lot. Um, I would say that Brianna and Jacob are one of my top ten book couples. And then the next book I wanted to mention was Beach Read. Emily Henry Fast became one of my new favorite authors. I have read every single book that's been out recently by her. Beach Read, Happy place people you meet on vacation and book lovers the couple that this book focuses on is january and gus um and this is set um so gus and january are authors and what they do is they both have writer's block so they switch um genres and spend time at the beach writing and that's how they build up their relationship and the relationship build up between them is really good and I love the banter between them. Emily Henry does a really good job of writing banter um and then yeah so these are three romance books I would highly recommend. A fourth one which I don't have handy with me right now is Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros <coughs> the uh the main female character in this book has my disability of cerebral palsy, and it's kind of cool because it's like set in um, a, a, a school for dragon fighters, so think of like How to Train Your Dragon mixed with Harry Potter, so it's pretty cool, uh, and it's pretty cool that a fantasy author made a character that has my disability of cerebral palsy, and I love the vi the, 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 the Disability representation for Violet. So, Alice Janine has been into uh, more reads uh, this past uh, couple weeks. Or a couple months, because I've, I've been reading since the end of December. And now we would like to describe uh, one play that we recently seen. Um, so, last weekend, Matt's mother got us tickets to the high school play at Kenny Bunk High School. Um, it was a one-act play of the uh, based on the book A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline L. Engel. Um, this n book had a movie based on it a couple of years ago where Oprah Winfrey was Mrs. Hooset. 
Um, so this character is really interesting. It's about a family whose father disappears and he's like a scientist. So the kids, Meg and Charlie, go to go find their dad. And like it's a it's a it's a whole journey for them about going to find their dad. And who were your favorite characters in in um in the play? I honestly liked um Adrienne as Meg. I, I liked uh Avery as Charles Wallace. And I also liked uh, Calvin and uh the red eyed man and Mr. Witch and Mr. Who. So for me, my favorite characters were Charles Wallace, uh, Cassie Midgley as Mrs. What's It, uh, Isabel Donnery as Mrs. Who, Quinn Downing as the father, and Red Eyed Man as uh, Ava Hackley as Red Eyed Man. So we wanted to congratulate the cast of the cast of A Wrinkle in Time on a good performance. And wish them luck in the one-act competition they're going to be in for the state of Maine at the beginning of next month. And stay tuned next week for part two of this video where we will be talking about Disney live-action movies and the Mean Girls musical movie. Thank you for tuning in. Have a good week. Yes, and be safe out there for your vacations.